this is Lamondo and I'm back to read you Clean Getaway. We're picking up at Route 16 to Mexico. This time Scoob is pulled from slumber by the fatty fragrance of bacon, which would normally be great, but right now he's literally lying on pieces of Gma's greatest treasures. The photo of G-Pop beneath the old hotel Marquee and Meridian, it's dented in the middle and has drool crusted over half the guy's face. Not good. He gently shifts, doesn't want Jima to know he's up until he can at least get all her stuff back in the treasure chest. He'll sneak it back down and slip it in a drawer while she's in the bathroom or something. Hopefully she hasn't noticed it's missing. The lid creaks as Scoob's lowering it to secure the latch, then he freezes. Thankfully, there's no reaction from below. He shoves the chest as far into a bunk corner as he can, then takes a preparation breath before shifting his curtain aside to climb down. The driver's side door of the RV opens, the moment Scoop's feet touch the floor, he literally jumps and yelps like a scared toddler. Gma sticks her head into the cab. You all right there, kiddo? For a second, they just stare at each other because Scoop can't get his mouth to move. Too many responses, some true, some not, are colliding in his head and breaking up into floating letters. He can't seem to wrangle back into words that make sense. Then she shrugs and climbs into the driver's seat. Left your breakfast in the microwave. Go on and grab it and sit down at the table so I can get us moving here. As soon as the door is shut, the rabid funk of cigarette smoke assaults Scoob's nose. That smacks him out of it. Gma, I'd really like to call my dad if you don't mind, Scoob says, striding up to the passenger seat to sit beside her as she cranks the RV. I don't mind, she says. Words so surprising to Scoob, they blow him back in his seat. He hopes she doesn't notice. You don't? Not in the least. Okay. Don't have the phone, though. The camper thunks into gear as Gma shoots out of the campsite space with more force than Scoob expects. You what now? Got rid of it, she says with a wave of her hand like it's the most trivial thing on planet Earth. Wasn't working right, so I threw it in the garbage. You threw your phone in the garbage? She nods once, resolutely. Sure did. Didn't need a phone the first time I took this trip. I don't need one now. Got maps in my keepsake box. I just snagged a current one from the campground front office. Scoob is astonished, as Shanice likes to say. He really misses that girl. Speaking of which, have you seen my keepsake box anywhere, she says? Could have sworn it was on the counter before I lay down yesterday, but when I went to look for my old Louisiana map, I couldn't find the thing. Checked all the drawers, cabinets, too. Oh, uh, no point in lying, at least not completely. I put it in my bunk for safekeeping. He braces himself for fury or suspicion or disappointment, something unpleasant from her. But when she turns back to him, she's beaming. Beaming. Well, what a good wingman you are, scuba doob. I mean that in the military sense, by the way, not the way young folks these days use it. She snorts, relying on a friend to test the waters when you're looking for a date, amateurs. Despite his mood, this makes Scoob chuckle. Anyway, so glad you're keeping our treasure protected. So responsible. Responsible. Dad's favorite word ever in the history of language. Which brings Scoob back to the matter at hand. Gma, you sure it was a good idea to throw your phone out? What if there's an emergency? We'll be fine. Since when are you a worry wart? I just mean Scoob gulps as he pieces Scoob Scoob gulps as pieces of his dream and what they could mean stalk through his head boogeyman style. How's dad supposed to get in touch with us or us with him? We with him, William. Is she correcting his grammar? Scoob has to swallow and clear his throat to do away with the who are you lady that tries to leap from his mouth. He presses on, I'm not worried, Jima, pure lies, but dad will be. And like, if I'm missing school, I'll at least need to call Shanice to get homework. Lordy, you sound just like your stick in the mud father. We're on a whirlwind adventure here, scuba doob. Homework, schmumwork. An adventure, huh? I'm just saying, Jima, Scoob goes on, deciding to run with this particular train of thought. It's as good a way as any to try and get some solid answers out of her. Exactly how many days of school do you think we'll miss? We should be back home, what, Thursday or so? She grins in that I know something you don't know kind of way grown-ups do sometimes. It's a grin Scoob's not fond of right now. Not when she's trying to justify trashing their sole means of communication while reeking of cigarette smoke. He can't even look at her anymore. It's like the woman he spent his whole life looking up to has been replaced by a total stranger. All shall be well, kiddo, she says, a grown-up non-answer. But Gma, besides... Home is where you make it. An hour and a half farther across Louisiana, which isn't as far as one would think considering their minimum speed limit pace, Gma turns the music down and signals to exit the freeway. Gas gauge is practically on E. Scuba Doob, did you know the Louisiana State song is You Are My Sunshine, she asks? 
Scoop did know that. It's one of the five Louisiana fun facts staring up at him from a small box in the top right corner of the Louisiana section of his map. Fun facts he's been reading and illustrating all over the state for who knows how long. A couple others. One, the highest point in the state is Mount Driscoll at 535 feet above sea level, which is less than 2% of the height of Mount Everest. And two, the state flower is the magnolia. Yeah, pretty cool. Want to hear something else about Louisiana? They turn right. Sure, because why not? This is a state where a girl named Ruby, like me, was the first person to go to a white school here in the South. Wait, no way, you mean Ruby Bridges? Oh, you know of her then. Dad told me about her in fourth grade. Scoob looks all around him. There are banks and restaurants, gas stations, even a Walmart super center. And he knows this was a long time ago, but to think a thing like that happened in a place looking like this? What happened there, he says. Not, what, that happened here, he says. Not here, but in Shreveport. No, New Orleans, but it was still a big deal for the state. Prior to her first day in 1960, schools in this part of the country were completely segregated. Jima turns into a gas station and parks at a pump. As she reaches for the door handle, the truth smacks Scoob. Jima, her eyebrows lift. Yes, William. He has to turn and look at her. Your school had only white kids when you were my age? Yep. Whoa, what was that like? She shrugs, it was my normal. Didn't think anything of it when I was in it. So you didn't have any black friends when you were a kid? Not a one. Dang, but enough about that now. She pats his knee. Let's not dwell on the past, hmm? Hop on down so we can grab some refreshments while the gas is pumping. Scoob does as he's told, but he winds up regretting it because as soon as they step inside the convenience store, the white clerk behind the counter looks between him and Jima and her eyes narrow. He refuses to look away this time. Even when, without taking her eyes off him, the clerk tugs the sleeve of a different clerk, whispers something to him, and then he looks at Scoob and Jima suspiciously. Strawberry or brown sugar, cinnamon, Pop-Tarts, kiddo, Jima calls out none the wiser. He sighs and heads over to where she's studying options in the unhealthy snack aisle. You pick Jima. She turns to study his face. You all right, Scooby-Doo? Yeah. Can't face her as he lies, so he pretends to skim the potato chip options. I'm fine. Except he's really not fine now because he can see the mail clerk restocking something nearby. And the guy keeps peeping in Scoob and Gma's direction. Scoob's had enough. I'm gonna get some air. And he walks away, eye stabbing both clerks before Gma can say a word. She unlocks the RV as she exits the store. Scoob climbs in and sits fuming while she replaces the gas pump. Probably should have offered to do it for her, but he's not in the mood. The second she's in her seat, she looks in his direction and opens her mouth to speak, but he beats her to it. Jima, how'd you and G-Pop meet? She blinks like she's caught off guard. Filling station, she says. Why do you ask? Where's that? Were you catching a train or something? She laughs. We're at a filling station. Guess what you call gas stations now? Oh, ironic. He was working at one, pumping gas. Wanted nothing to do at all with me at first. She shakes her head, but she's into the story now. I could tell you, scuba doop the excuses I came up with to visit that station as often as possible. Woo! Wore him down little by little, though. What made you want to date him, especially back then? Scoob decides to just go ahead and say what's on his mind. I'm sure you knew people would be opposed to it, right? Why put yourself through pain for someone you don't know? He's really hoping she doesn't say love at first sight or something bananas like that. Dunno, is her response with a shrug. There was something about him that wouldn't let me go. Stayed true for as long as we were together. Wasn't too bad to look at either. She winks. Gross. Scoob shakes it off. So what do you go to jail for? Like, I know it was grand larceny. Uh, theft. Yeah, but what do you steal? She doesn't respond at first, but he's got a hunch that she will. She's got all her baby blues all squinched up behind her glasses, and she's worrying. As he's heard her say, when he's doing it, her bottom lip between her teeth. She shifts her focus out the window. His conviction involved money and jewelry, but it's complicated, Scooby-Doo. Bottom line, he was unjustly imprisoned. Yes, he did some stealing. Yes, stealing is wrong, but he didn't steal everything the police said he did. She doesn't go on. Scoop's turn to be res responseless now. We just need to get to Juarez, she says, suddenly energized. She puts the RV in gear. Scoop opens his mouth to speak, but changes his mind. There's nothing left to say. Everything will be fine then. They're going. We'll get there, and I'll finish. She sits up straighter. We just got to get to Mexico. So here we are, passing through Texas, the Lone Star State. And we're up to Route 17, best day ever. They cross into Texas and drive for a while without stopping, which is a huge relief to Scoob, knowing they're finally making some real progress on this journey, he guesses. 
Scoopsing the map, the city they're headed to is literally right across the border. His new hope is that once they make it to Juarez, that Jima fixes or finishes or makes whatever it is right, her conscience will be clear, her hair will turn green, like go or something, and she'll be so relieved they'll hop back in the RV and hightail at home. After another gas run and a pause for lunch, 17 miles outside Dallas, at least according to the sign they've just passed, they push on. It's nice. Scoop set his window down and fresh air gusting on his face as they gobble miles and miles of Texas open road clears his head in a way he doesn't expect. He actually falls asleep, which he only discovers when Gma touches his leg and he jerks awake so hard, both arms flying to the air and he squawks like a startled chicken. Gma laughs hard. Sleeping good? Not funny, Gma, Scoop says, rubbing his eyes. Well, if you'll indulge me one final stop on this trek of ours, I'll make the interrupted slumber worth your while. Another stop. I'd like to fulfill what's been a dream of mine for a very long time. Oh, says Scoop, okay. She doesn't say anything else until they're taking the exit into Arlington. It's the exit for? No way. Gma, are we going to Six Flags? When she looks at him this time, Scoop sees her. His Gma, the one he's known his whole life. The biggest belly laugh ever bubbles out of him. I knew you'd be into it, she says. It's why you're my favorite grandson. She makes her white eyebrows dance. There's no expressing how good it feels to have her back. Scoop has to say he's never seen Gma this awestruck before. She looks like one of those kids in Christmas movies who wake up to a tree packed with presents underneath, like the whole world has got handed to her on a gold rim plate. We gotta find the runaway mine train, scuba doob, she says. The Six Flags we have in Georgia opened in 67, and one of their premier rides was the Dallanago Mine Train, Runaways, the Texas version. Wait, really? Scoop's never been to Six Flags over Georgia, but he's heard of the Dallanago Mine Train. Yep. As your G-Pop and I passed that park on our way out of Atlanta, I was sad. Knew I'd never get to experience a place like that with him. There wasn't a theme park in the South that would have permitted it. Now Scoob is sad too. But there's redemption, she practically shouts. When you and me stopped for gas not too long ago, I noticed an old poster for this Six Flags on one of the walls. Had a mine train right on it and everything. Now g -Ma's. Now Scoob is smiling. g -Ma would notice a random poster in a gas station. Asked the attendant about it, he told me the thing's still in operation. Oldest coaster in the park, he said. I knew right then we had to stop. Scoop consults the map and they get to walking, but as soon as they're standing in front of the entrance and he sees how rickety the ride looks, he feels like his stomach has dropped down to his ankle region. Ah, uh, how old is this coaster? Built in 66, according to the fella. Ain't it amazing? It was here when your G-Pop and I started our trip. Would have passed right by it had we made it this far. 66, that's older than dad. That's really old for a roller coaster. Are you sure this thing is safe, Gma? Scoop says as I step into line. The line isn't very long, which doesn't seem like a good sign. Don't be such a killjoy, she says. You think they let people on if it wasn't safe? Nobody wants a lawsuit, scuba doo I guess she's got a point there. Come on. After a 15 minute wait, during which Gma bounces off the walls on her tiny feet like she's never been so excited in her life, they climb into the very front coaster car. Oh boy. Despite the fact that the thing squeaks and groans and it, like it's complaining about having bad luck, the moment Scoob and Gma sit down and the initial takeoff is jerky, so Scoob feels like his lunch is about to reappear in his treasures. Once they're fully in motion, the ride winds up being pretty fun. He's sure it's partially due to Gma's whoops and wheeze and squeals of glee from beside him, but by the time they get off, he's feeling pretty exhilarated. Let's find a bigger one, Gma shouts, her poof of white hair standing up all over her head like she stuck a butter knife in a toaster. Scoob did that once, he doesn't recommend it. A bigger what? Coaster! As she throws her hands in the air, and they do. There's a shock wave. Scoob has no idea what G's are, but the ride promises 5.9 of them, and based on how his heart flip-flops around inside his body, he'd say it delivers. And then the Joker, a strange one for sure, they spend more time upside down than right side up. The Titan's massive drop makes Scoop feel like his brain got left back at the top of the metal hill, on and on. And when he and g step to the Superman Tower of Power, what they've decided will be their final ride, Scoop's eyebrows shoot up to his hairline. He has to tilt his head back as far as it'll go to see the top of the thing. And the whole experience winds up being way worse than he expects. He's pretty sure his lungs stay on the ground as they shoot 32 stories into the air. And he definitely dies for a few seconds during the drop. But once their feet are back on the ground, he hugs Jima so tight she yelps, don't break me, kiddo. He lets go and looks her in the eye. Jima, yes, thank you. For what? For making this the best day ever. When we return, we are going to read chapter, I'm um, root, 
18, caught red-handed. Now, normally when you're caught red-handed, you're found guilty beyond any other explanation. So we'll see who's guilty and of what when we return. See you then.